It's my great pleasure today to be interviewing Annette Badland. She's been an actor most of her adult life and starting out with the Actors' Company with the likes of Ian McKellen. She then spent the first 10 years of her career mostly in the theatre. She's worked in film and television in series like Bergerac, Cutting It and Outlander. She's also been in two of the most popular soaps, one on the radio, The Archers, which I love, and the other on television in EastEnders, where she's played the rather unpleasant character of Babe Smith. So, Annette, how do you play someone like Babe? As an actor, you have to love your character, I think. You don't necessarily have to like them, but you have to find the reasons why they operate as they do. So I think for Babe it's always been the fact that she wants to be loved and she wants to really be at the heart of her family and can never get there. She's always on the periphery, always the aunt, never the mother. And that's the, uh, the context for her, for me. And you play a similarly um, less than pleasant character <laughs> in the Archers. <laughs> I have been described as the queen of mean. <laughs> yes, so yes. Is that a similar process that you go through with her? Do you, do you feel yes. she has redeeming features as well? Um, I haven't been <laughs> able to find them so easily with Hazel, but she was adopted. And I have several friends who have been adopted whose lives are not easy. They bring a lot of baggage with them. Um, and have felt rejected by their mother in the first place and in a way they persecute the world for that and I think Hazel does that. She attacks and she is wicked with other people because she's constantly prodding the world, seeing how much it will take, poking you in the eye, pinching you and to see whether how much you will accept of that and of her. So when did you know that you wanted to be an actor? I've always said it was the uh, parents' day and I got to enact Meg's Merrilies uh, while my class chanted the poem behind me. I got to enact the character and it was the first time I felt the audience. I could make them laugh and I could stop making them laugh. And I'm an only child so I think that had something to do with it. Suddenly there was this very strong connection with a whole group of people. Um, but thinking about it, I do remember when I was about six or seven being in, uh, in the line to hand in some work to my teacher. A wonderful woman, Miss Bateman, who I think was one of those people that turned my life around because books had not been in my life and, and Miss Bateman took me to her house where she had a library and it just opened a lot of doors for me. But I can remember being in, in the line to hand in my work and being bored and, and, and waiting and starting to pretend I was at a bus stop and hold my hand out, is it raining, is the bus coming, looking at other people and making the class laugh. So maybe it started when I was six or seven and not ten. <laughs> and what was your first big break in your acting career? Um, there have been many things. I, I, there are always the first. So I got into the RSC um, when I was relatively new out of drama school and that, uh, that was huge for me because it was where I always wanted to be. I'd seen, gone and seen plays at Stratford, uh, fallen in love with it, so that was a huge thing for me. My first telly was um, Naked Civil Servant, which was a huge landmark in British television. Um, and then, you know, filming and Jabberwocky with the Python lot. So it's a lot of things that stimulate you are firsts. As actors, we only ever sort of get about half a dozen things that we hold in the palm of our hand and go, yeah, that's, that's why I joined this profession. Um, the play, The Rise and Fall of Little Voice, was very important to me. And then we went on to do the film, but the play was um, orientated much more to the female psyche and that the women were much stronger in the play. Um, so that was enormous for me. And to, to have an audience that you'd made cry and laugh and that stood on their feet every night and gave us the most wonderful reception. So that was enormous to me. So would you say that was the most enjoyable role that you've had? It was pretty special, but um, as I say, we have about half a dozen things that we hold in our hands. So there was a film called Last Day of Summer that I did for Channel 4, which was an Ian McEwan story. And that was 
really unique because I got on with the director very well. I had a boy co-star. We got on terribly well. It was an idyllic summer. It was Ian McEwan's writing. It's taken from his novel. Well, it's a, a set of short stories. Um, First Love, Last Rites, and it, he adapted it for the screen. So that was consummate. Um, Little Voice was an enormous joy uh, to hear Jane Horrocks turn into all those characters every night, to be with Alison Steadman, who I knew anyway, but we had a great relationship. Uh, and Jim Cartwright, the writing is often very important. Jim Cartwright and his writing was you know, pretty extraordinary and could uh, seeming reality that was poetry. Lots to relish. Do you think it's getting easier for older female actors to get roles? I think uh, in society generally things are changing and need to change and I think yes uh, we are more empowered than we used to be. I found that in casting often now uh, you get a huge lump of uh, the elder lady will be from 50 to 70, which is nonsense, absolute nonsense. Um, but I think they are becoming more specific, you know, um, actors are voicing it, writers, because the writing uh, generation, people writing for television are ageing too, they're beginning to write as material, so that's fantastic. So I think it is altering, but not fast enough. What advice would you give to young women entering the acting profession? After I've said, now? after I've said, don't do it. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, and it's what people said to me, and I think if you can resist that, and you really have to do it, then go ahead and be empowered. Find every resource you can to strengthen yourself, because the knocks will be many, uh, and whether that's sitting in a bath of cold yogurt singing hymns or whether it's Is that it? <laughs> no but anything you can strengthen your own nature oh, uh, and be resilient yeah. to the knocks you're going to take you know yeah. it might be an acting method I've no <laughs> idea <laughs> I thought it was something that you guys no I've no, no. if I had I wouldn't yeah. confess <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how do you feel about getting older Mixed. I, I, um, I feel empowered. I worry about becoming a grumpy old lady because I do find that um, words pop out of my mouth now when I'm cross on public transport. <laughs> I seem to be a bit... Um, I'm unfettered now and do grumble. And, whereas in the past you sort of, I used to sort of just accept it or sit on the emotions. Now I'm cross and I want off the train. So, but in a way I find that quite refreshing because I've never been like that in my life. So I just don't have time to mess about and want to get on with what I want to do. Um, keeping physically uh, strong and supple and all those things I do work at because I am aware of that you know, diminishing, and I'm someone that used to dance a lot, and, and in Little Voice that we were talking about, we did a whole Michael Jackson routine, and I was running over the sofa and up the wall and all sorts of things. So I regret the loss of that. So I'm doing all I can. I love swimming. I swim a lot. Um, uh, trying to keep that from diminishing is, is important to me. Um, but I am, I don't have children. But I am fortunate enough with acting to be around a lot of young people, and I think that's important too. Tonight I'm being taken out by a young man from EastEnders, Ted Riley, is taking me to the theatre, and that's fantastic. And we don't have social barriers. Actors are, or we're a group and we're moving forward, and I think that's a privilege, because I don't know that that happens generally in society unless you've got a grandson who would take you. Um, so I feel very privileged that I have a young group of friends, a mixed group. And finally, um, you're obviously a customer of Look Fabulous Forever, I, which is yes. fantastic. <laughs> um, so what do you uh, like about Look Fabulous Forever and, and what would you say your favourite products are? I love the colour range. I'm in love with the eye primer. I'm in love with the aubergine eyeshadow. 
which I go to all the time. And I like experiment, the lip colours, and um, I like changing with the seasons. So those are my... The eye primer was a huge revelation to me and, and I just adored, fell in love immediately. <laughs> no question. Lovely. Thank you so much, Annette. I really enjoyed talking to you this afternoon. It's been lovely. It's been my pleasure. Thank you.